is Jesus a prophet? We're going to look at that in today's daily devotion. It's March 30th, 2020. I'm Pastor John Blevins. I'm thankful that you're here with us again for another devotion. We're going to start out in God's Word, which as we begin to unpack our the answer to our question, it's going to make even more sense why we always start every devotion in God's Word. So 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 10-12. through 12. Concerning this salvation, the prophets who prophesied about the grace that was to be yours searched and inquired carefully, inquiring what person or time the Spirit of Christ in them was indicating when he predicted the sufferings of Christ and the subsequent glories. It was revealed to them that they were serving not themselves but you, And the things that have now been announced to you through those who preach the good news to you by the Holy Spirit sent from heaven. Things into which angels long to look. This is one of several of the study passages that you see down in the description. As we read from 1 Peter. A little bit of a a glimpse as to where we're going in the answering of our, our question. Uh, Not only is this one of our study texts uh, that you see down there, uh, those study texts are are several passages that come together and summarize uh, the theology portion that we are now going to turn to in Westminster Larger Catechism, question 43. How doth Christ execute the office of a prophet? Christ executeth the office of a prophet in his revealing to the church in all ages by his spirit and word in diverse ways of administration the whole will of God in all things concerning their edification and salvation. Also going to look at Westminster Shorter Catechism, question 24. How doth Christ execute the office of a prophet? Christ executeth the office of a prophet in revealing to us by his word and spirit the will of God for our salvation. So, is Jesus a prophet? Well, yes, he is. In fact, that's one of the offices that he has as the Lord Jesus Christ. So as Messiah, as Christ, one of the offices that he fulfills and holds is the office of prophet. And as we saw there in First Peter, there, there's an unpacking, an understanding that the Holy Spirit, part of the office of prophet, is Christ sending the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is driving the preaching of the gospel, the delivering of God's word. So you see here in First Peter, there was this this clear picture that was being uh, drawn and understood to the reader. The Holy Spirit had sent the truth through the messengers, through those preaching it, through those sharing God's word at that time. And from the reception of that, Christ was acting as a prophet. As he clearly was, through the Spirit, having the gospel and God's word proclaimed there. As we look at a larger portion of that, We understand that as prophet, what Christ is doing is he is revealing to all people, but especially God's people, what they need to know about salvation and what they need to know about sanctification. So we understand, the Bible teaches, that all of Scripture is God-breathed. It's God-breathed. The inspiration of the Holy Spirit is what carries men along. And it is the Lord Jesus Christ, his prophet, who is delivering all of Scripture. It's an amazing thing as we look at the the New Testament uh, in Hebrews, as it opens up and it talks about how the Lord chose to speak to men in various ways throughout Old Testament history, in that portion of the redemptive history, uh, and prophets who were speaking, using the prophets, Uh, to do miracles, to attest to what it is uh, that they were proclaiming is God's word, that prophets received the uh, inspired word of God given to them through dreams and different means. 
But when we come to the New, the New Testament, it's clear that the one behind God's Word being delivered in the Old Testament now had come in flesh and was delivering God's Word right to the people. And then we see continuing from Genesis to Revelation, all of God's Word comes from the Lord Jesus Christ in his office of prophet. A prophet simply, I mean, I know that when we think here prophet, we often think of, oh, prophet, talking about the future. Oh, the prophets who in the Old Testament gave us the messianic prophecies. And that's true, but, but prophet simply means anyone who's revealing God's word to God's people, to the world. Anyone revealing God's word through the scriptures. And we understand as we look at the Bible, uh, the Lord Jesus Christ has finished that canon. The Bible is complete. God has spoken. That's why we can be confident as we turn, pick up God's word. Christian, as you read your Bible today, you are hearing from God. It's amazing. Anytime you want to hear from God, all you have to do is pick up the Bible and read. And that is God's word. And as we shift into our application and and our, you know, what we're going to media, uh, meditate upon today and the truth of God's Word and think about and wrestle with and be encouraged by is the fact that God's Word is complete. There's not a, just like the Gospel, there's not a, the Bible and. Just like in the Gospel, it's, it's not God's grace and. You know, uh, the free gift of God's grace and your really hard work. No, that's not the gospel. The Bible and what this individual who has been claimed to reveal God's word, whether it be called a prophet, a bishop, a apostle, a pope, whatever that may be, whether we find ourselves in a group that considers themselves to, to fall along in the Christian tradition or, or perhaps a little farther out from the Christian tradition but, but still claims roots in the scriptures. You see this in most of the world religions and in many cults out there. What you'll find is the Bible and man's word. The Bible and another text. And what ends up happening is the Bible and whatever the and is generally becomes superior to the scriptures. And in that, they're saying Jesus did not fulfill his role as prophet. He didn't. He needed to, we needed to, God needed to finish it with this. So don't be fooled by those things. The scriptures are clear. We don't need the Bible plus anything. A great battle was fought and won in the Reformation as God's word was restored to the central position that it should have. It's one of the reasons why when you go to uh, Bible-believing Protestant worship, the scriptures are the central point. The scriptures are read, the scriptures are prayed, the scriptures are preached, the scriptures are sung, the scriptures are seen in the sacraments. Everything focuses in on God's word that has been revealed to us by the Lord Jesus Christ in his office of prophet. So don't, don't, don't get yourself confused. It's not the Bible and. No, no, no. Lord Jesus Christ has revealed the scriptures to us. Everything that God wants us to know about himself, he has revealed. In his, we read in the scriptures, he has given gifts to his New Testament church. Those gifts are officers, particularly in those are elders who proclaim God's word. So today, when you read and listen to God's word, praise him and thank him for that, knowing that Christ in his office of prophet has revealed that truth to all of his people. Oh Lord, we are thankful for that. Thankful that you have revealed your truth. Thankful that the Lord Jesus Christ is our prophet. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. It's good to be with you today. Like, subscribe, share with friends and family.